I never told you about the resolution of the whole teeth hurting, getting to know a different part afterwards. I had the kind of the teeth pain at the front of the teeth the next day, all day long. And then I, I think I told you that after I'd figured it out, the teeth pain subsided. And I'd never had that experience before where, where I had an issue with some tooth and the issue just went away instead of just escalating until I had to go to the dentist. What I never told you, what we never had a chance to chat about was what happened, like what the resolution was or the recognition. And that was meeting a new part of me, which I, I shall call the endurer. It's kind of the part of me that endures things that I'm not comfortable or I feel overwhelmed or whatever, when I'm kind of like sternly enduring pain of some sort. And I had spent like the, a whole day in that, with that pain, I was trying to like balance out all the fear that I usually have and kind of panic of like, ah, I'm going to have to find a dentist. It's going to have to be in Germany before I go to Greece, because if I go to Greece, I have a tooth problem. That really is going to suck. And, yada, yada. and I had like all these anxieties that I had to calm down on the first day of the tooth pain and just trust that there's too much of a coincidence that I started having this intense jaw discomfort after talking to Charlie and telling her that that jaw thing is gone and I've mastered it by figuring this out. But then I thought, isn't it weird that it's not just the jaw tension, but it's kind of a pain. Is that the, you know, whatever the karmic, you know, now you are really going to get fucked since you're pretending everything is good already. Or what is it? And then at some point during that day of, of tooth pain, I sat down and I started writing. And what crystallized itself there was that there was a, there was a pain I felt, a part of me felt in pain. And that was kind of the part of me that endures. And I remember I had told Charlie, not just that I had figured out the whole jaw tension, it was my inner critic and yada, 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 and all that. But eventually when it came to body, she asked, do you have a body pain? Is there some discomfort, something? One thing that came up that I shared with her was, you know what, Charlie, when you structure this yoga session with me, one thing that I always do is I always endure. And that's a very physical thing for me is to just endure every discomfort. And that's been an issue. I want to get better at not having to just purely suffer through and endure things. So there was this part of me that felt intensely hurt by now me again going, well, this thing that I used all my life to get through all kinds of shit. Can we just get rid of that? I don't need that anymore. I'm not like above this. And I had my ups and downs. Like anytime I, the pattern that I've recognized now or that I see now is that whenever I, I truly meet a part of me, even if it's a thing that I've known about me, like certain emotions I have or certain tendencies, when I meet it as an internal part, like a humanized part, Depending on what it is, it, there's always, it takes time to fully see it and to start a real relationship with it, because most of these things I have not had real relationships with. And so it can take a while before I really hear it clearly, understand it fully. And when there's enough trust on both sides to really have like dialogues, right? And, and, and being connected. So I had a few small episodes since then, but I'm in Greece now. Tooth pain has been gone for, you know, I don't know, one and a half weeks. So I haven't really thought about it too much. Last night at 4 a.m., I woke up and my front, my front bottom teeth was hurting a lot. And in my delirious sleep, there was a, okay, I might have to go to, like, this might be it. I might have to go to the dentist tomorrow. <laughs> you know, in a place in Greece where I would usually try to avoid going to a dentist. And then I thought, huh, why is my inner endure in pain again? Like, what is it? What is the, this pain that it manifests itself so strongly? And I, and I just by physical sensation, I could tell that I, I probably have been grinding my front teeth in the night. And so I made a mental note and a promise and I thought tomorrow morning, we shall talk. I need to visit you in full presence and pay attention so I can hear and understand what is going on, right? 
And just a couple of minutes ago, I finally sat down and I started writing. And that's also an interesting process where it takes, sometimes it takes a few sentences before the writing takes over on its own and the true clarity starts presenting, like things start popping up again that are not consciously thoughts, thought, consciously created thoughts, but it's more insights and thoughts and emotions that bubble up from a different place. And I ju it's just a, a flow that as I read it, I hear it and see it and understand it for the first time. And this session was, was super intense just a few moments ago because the, basically the endurer told me that I, and this is true, I try to be above it. And although I used this part, I used it all day long yesterday, many, many situations during the day. I was not comfortable. I was not fully at peace with a situation, a dynamic. I was tense. I was tired. I, it, whatever it was, I tried to use all these other parts in my imagination was going, well, I'm going to be breathing deeply, accepting, relaxing, all these quote unquote, better parts of me, right? Holier parts. Oh, well, you know, the patient Steli, the wise Steli the logical steli, the accepting and open steli, the giving and loving steli. But underneath it, the endurer was carrying us all up a fucking mountain. And when we reached the top, I turned around and started praising all my good parts for look how far we've come. We now can get through a day like this in perfect clarity and peace. And we used none of the endurer. And the endurer was like, well, fuck all of you assholes. Like, especially you, Steli, for using me. I'm good enough because without me, you wouldn't get through a fucking day in your life. But now that you know all these other things, you know, I'm just your donkey. And uh, you turn around and you're giving speeches about unicorns and fucking horses, but who got you all on top of this mountain? Those unicorns and horses were on my back. I carried them up here. <laughs> None of them. You didn't fucking flow up the fucking mountain on these things. And I thought, yeah, fuck. Right. Okay. There's, um, it's a real humbling that is happening where I go, I always, and I want to be holier than I am, wiser than I truly am. That was your message about how humbling it is to see yourself in your full humanity, huh? No, that was no? maybe the pre-message. That, okay. that was a little moment where I was in the pool with my children. Okay. And I was playing with them. And then I noticed, so I was alone with the, with the kids and their mom and my mother and their other grandparents, they all hadn't come to the pool yet. So I was kind of the first adult in the pool with them and I was playing. And at the beginning, I was just having fun with them, being the dad, enjoying it. And then I noticed a pattern. I constantly was looking at the area where they would appear if they show up at the pool. Uh -huh. And I was in my mind wanting to make sure that they're going to see me in the pool playing with the children. That's why I wasn't leaving the pool because I actually wanted to get out of the pool. I was like, this was fun for 20 minutes. I wanted to go out of the pool and chill a little bit, but I wasn't allowing myself to do that because I wanted the image of the amazing seen, father okay. in the pool playing. <laughs> I didn't want them to show up and see the father lazily fucking on the chair doing nothing. Okay. And when I recognized that, I thought how humbling it is <laughs> to be a mere mortal to be a little crawling mm -hmm. human with all his little human, mm -hmm. you know, pettiness. Uh, selfish pettiness here, <laughs> pretending to play with his children while 10, 15 minutes ago, he stopped being in the pool and is only looking to endure this until the adults have seen what an amazing father. And then I can get the fuck out of the pool because okay. I want to relax a little bit.
and I'd had enough of the pool. That was the moment where I wrote to you, you know, when you see yourself in your full humanity, it is a truly humbling exercise. Um, There's a lot of humbling, humbling going on. <laughs> the huh? humbling never stops. The humbling never stops. As long as the inner work continues, the, the humbling, humbling never stops. And so, um, yeah, this was a, 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 a humbling moment I had today again, where I thought, yes, I have, I do feel a tiny bit wiser, a tiny bit more relaxed, a tiny bit more open, a tiny bit more creative, but I still need the endurer to get through lots of things in my day. And the other thing, after my yoga session today, I had to, this is the first time I did yoga for an hour and I had to immediately yoga and meditation and I had to immediately enter the real world. Usually I do yoga and then for an hour afterwards, half an hour to an hour, I want to go on a walk and sit in silence. I'm kind of like yeah. in a different state of mind. But today, the moment I got out of yoga, I was already 10 minutes late to meet up for breakfast with the entire family at the buffet at the hotel, right? Huh. As I was entering the hotel, there was this juxtaposition between I am so still and calm inside. I'm sort of floating and a little bit of an altered state. And there's such morning busyness all around me, all these humans, food, children crying, all that. And as I picked up a plate and some things, I saw uh, a lady that's the manager of one of the restaurants here of the buffet. And she was reprimanding one of the waiters and was telling him everything she does for them and blah, blah, blah. You guys need to do more of this and more of that. But one interesting thing about this hotel resort is, I don't know if this is a common thing because of COVID, but they're way understaffed, way understaffed. They have four restaurants here and we had two waiters in our restaurant and those two waiters worked at three different restaurants. They were okay. going to three restaurants to, to do their work. So everything was slower and the waiters were sweating bullets and were stressed. Same thing with everybody here, right? It's just like this, I, I feel it's a massive resort. There's thousands of people here. And I feel like there are six people working here because I see them everywhere, everywhere. So as this lady was reprimanding the managers, like I do all this for you guys, oh, this waiter, and you guys have to help me, blah, 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 and was telling them all these things. There was this insight or this thought or this feeling that bubbled up in me that was, wow, humanity's capacity to endure is almost limitless. It's incredible. Our capacity, because I was for a moment imagining or projecting my enduring onto her. And it felt like, I felt like, wow, if I had the amount of stress that I perceive in this woman right now and had to deal with so much stress, 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 stress all day long, running around being stressed, like, Right now, with the sensitivity that I feel, with feeling a bit more present and connected, I would just collapse. I'd be like, I can't. This is a level of stress and negativity I can't handle. But I'm like, but look, we can handle anything and everything. We can endure so much. And she doesn't probably doesn't even know, right? Or at least maybe I connected back, remembering times where I endured so much and I just went cold in so many places and just just went on with life. Just didn't even didn't even fully realize it in the moment, like how much I'm actually carrying on my back. So this, this endurer part is doing still so much work in me, through me and with me and for me, but I am already kind of head in the clouds, imagining overlaying. That was a, a part of what I wrote where, or part of the endurer was writing. I am carrying all these burdens, but when the work is done, you, the mask and cloth clothing of others are put on top and they are praised. Like I'm wearing mm. these masks of these other parts, carrying this thing. And we're like, wow, the why is steady. Wow. The patient stuff. But underneath it, it's me who's sweating and suffering mm. for all this. And I get zero recognition, zero credit. Yeah. zero credit. Nobody sees me. Nobody credits me. And now that you've, I mean, only in the last year did I even realize that I'm always using a capacity to endure that I use this so much. And now that you know, you want to, you want to be above it and get 
away from me go, ah, I don't want to endure this much anymore. I want to be better than just enduring. And it's sort of the, the final straw that is breaking the camel's back. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, this hurts. This yeah. hurts. Yeah. Um, and I was like, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, how, uh, um, a friend of us oftentimes says, da muss ich erstmal drauf klarkommen. Ja? <laughs> like, this is, <laughs> this is news. I have to like, <laughs> I have to like be able to fucking deal with, I, I need some time to deal with this new truth. <laughs> to digest Deering. this. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also um, the, the reason I like one of the, I think many reasons why I want, why, why I endure or I use my enduring part so much it's because of what it's because I don't want to show the world my angry side, my impatient side, my egotistical side, my weak side, my tired side. That's another thing. Like I, whenever I think in the past, somebody would go, oh, Stelly's a little tired it was something about me that was irritated, although it was true. Because to me, tired is weak again, right? So I was like, I'm not tired. I just don't like this and this and blah, blah, blah. Or, or I would say, well, let me see you with two children, with a huge business, with this, with this, with this travel schedule, and then show me how you would. And it'd be like, motherfucker, you're just tired, right? But I, I did and all these things, my tired self, my angry self, my petty self, my needy self, I want to hide. So I have to grind my teeth and pretend on the outside through stiffness and tension, everything is fine. I have everything under control. I'm calm. I'm cool. I don't feel bad inside. I'm not holding something back, although I do to tremendous amount. Right? And then um, you wonder, where's all this tension coming from? Yeah. <laughs> we are amazing I, creatures. Yeah, I, 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 yes. I am and we are. I remember you months ago, I'd be like, I'm sitting here in Austin at the balcony. I'm reading a book. I'm sunbathing. I'm taking it so easy. Why am I, why am I so tense? Why can't I let it go? Um, yeah. The letting go part, there's a beautiful thing that happened. We'll talk about it another time with, um, when I first talked to Charlie about how to structure my kind of yoga and meditation hour, at some point I said something about the belt, my belly. It's like, oh, I'm, you know, I, I like these folds. I think after my first session with her, I said, you know, I really enjoyed these folds over the belly and this, that, and the other. And she said, she said, oh yeah, the belly, that's where we hold all our shit. And then she continued saying other things. And the entire day that was coming back to me, I'm like, this is where I'm holding all my shit. And then that all the dominoes fell one after the other. And I was like, yeah, that is true. I'm always, I am not letting go of my shit. I'm not showing my shit either. I don't want to show it to anybody. I don't want to let go of it. So I'm holding it in. And there's a whole thing that I'm noticing as I'm doing yoga. And that started with a psilocybin trip in Hol Holland where I had an issue fully breathing all air out of my system, right? I am, I always want to stop at 50% and then start breathing in again. But the complete out breath takes, it takes real focus because my, my belly stops there and tenses up and goes, this is it. Now it's time to breathe in again. And when I want to breathe fully out, I have to push my belly inside to really, and really focus on it. And because I never breathe in fully, uh, breathe out fully, I can't breathe in, breathe in fully as well. My, you know, the cup is always half full with exhaust, with tension, with whatever. And then I go, I want to fill my cup with life, but I can't. I always can only take in th this much. Why? Yeah. Because I didn't empty it out first. Yeah. And there's a special, special spot at the breathe out when you've like fully exhaled also, right? What do you mean? Uh, if you, if you like exhale completely and then you don't even immediately inhale, right? There's like a little 
a little mm-hmm. zoom of quietness of presence. A, yes. Yes. This is, there's a little moment of full quietness yeah. and stillness. You know, um, when I was speaking at the mushroom trip at the retreat, yeah. at some point I had a experience of feeling the mushroom energies talking to me or communicating is the better word. They didn't speak, but they were, commu- I felt their presence and they were communicating to me. And I remember their message was, Steli, you don't have to breathe in, you know, you still have, you have so much oxygen in your system. Did you know, even your skin breathes, everything breathes. You don't have to breathe. You can just let go of breathing for a little bit. And as I was not breathing in, I remember feeling incredible bliss. It felt so good and so true. But then there was a a voice in my head that went, I get what you're telling me. And I'm sure even if I die, you know, everything is perfect, but I kind of want to live. So I'm going to breathe in now. (laughs) And and I I remember the, the energy of the mushrooms, right? The mushroom, you know, (laughs) entities were like, yeah, we get that, but really just try it. You don't have to breathe. And then I went, I, you know, I went. I thought I was not breathing for a real long time and it felt really good. And then I went again, yeah, but no. And then the, the, my experience was almost like the mushrooms went, okay. And then they just went away. It was sort of the most gentle teaching I've ever experienced where they were offering something and I went, no, I don't want to try this. And they, they shoulder shrugged with a smile and went, okay maybe a different time. And they just left. There was no judgment. There was no, oh, okay. And when I first got out of the, the trip, I was like, what the fuck was this all about? Like, I was like, this is the weirdest thing. I can't even tell this story to anybody and make I sense of it. it. What is the, uh, master Ukwe or something like this in Kung Fu Panda, yeah. the turtle. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that, that was very much the energy, like a uh, smiling, sentient being that is so wise that was just like saying this and gently. And I was like, uh, no, and it was just like, uh, you know, <laughs> everything's perfect either way. You know, there's like not a care in the world to convince me or to fight with me. It, it, it was even more, it was so, there was such a gentleness in the, all right, then we'll, you know, we'll leave that. <laughs> has almost never experienced gentleness in a rejection, you know? <laughs> um, and so I sensed a great wisdom, but I also woke up and thought, I have no idea what this is about. <laughs> I'll have to meditate on this for a long time to try to puzzle yeah. this together. And then, you know, as I, on the come down of the trip, I had this tremendous amount of energy that bubbled up and anger yeah. and rage, but it was an empowering rage. And it took me a couple of days until I did connect a little bit of the dots of like, oh yeah, I'm, I haven't emptied out the anger I felt for myself at the rage for some of the decisions of the way I live my life. It, but I want to fill my heart with love and joy. And like, I can't, I can't do the one without doing the other because my, my intention for that trip, the thing I'd r- written down was fill my heart with magic, wonder, and joy. Right. And then I was like, that was no magic, wonder, and joy at all it in this trip. Rage. It was pure rage and anger, but it was a, a be- it felt sad. Yeah. It, there was a satisfying rage and anger and an empowering yeah. rage and anger. Yeah. I'm like, this is, a, this is interesting. And then later I thought, well, yeah, if I had all this in my body and it just needed to go for magic and wonder to start entering it again. Um, but, and now even in the yoga practice, I notice how much I have, how much I hold on and how difficult it is for me to fully release all oxygen, to f- fully exhaust everything and trust that I don't need to hold back a little bit for bad times, you know, mm. or if I breathe out too much, that it's going to be giving up too much, right? You have to mm. fully give everything you have completely. And then you can fully take everything the universe and life has to give you. And then you give it all back again. Now holding back. If you want to experience everything life has to offer to you. 
but it's that little fear, that little hesitation, that little, like, let me save this, the Swabian, right? Let's put it in a bank account. Um, that is making it difficult to then get all that life has to offer. And I even noticed when you do these poses and then it's four in breaths. So we're kind of counting to four breathing in, but then counting to eight breathing out at first, because I could not breathe out to eight, I was slowing down my breathing out. So again, I could breathe out to a count of eight while still maintaining 40% of oxygen in my lungs before I mm. breathe in again, instead of doing it evenly, because if you do right. it evenly, you have to right. push and push and push and push to get to eight of fully yeah. exhaling. So all these little, and yeah, I instantly think, well, again, what are the metaphors for life, right? Where I go, oh, I have to breathe out more fully. So I breathe out slower. So I don't have to breathe out more fully, but I pretend yeah. I am. That's like right? pre-calculations and Yes, yeah. these little adjustments so you don't have to change. But you think yeah. you're doing the thing, but you're adjusting yeah. to not do the thing. The other thing that I have these days, which is a beautiful little struggle, is that there's so many stories that I experience every day, little dynamics, little insights, little beautiful little moments. And then I know I have to constantly calm my storyteller down because I know I won't be able to tell all of this to Ramit, right? We don't have three and a half hours. And every day where I don't tell some of these stories, the anxiety is mounting up, <laughs> is bubbling up. And it's like, but, but we're losing all these amazing stories. Ramit needs to hear this. We need to record all this. And I go, life is a never ending source of brilliant stories. The ones that aren't meant to be told will be told. And the ones that are meant to be forgotten and reappear or fully forgotten will just relax, just, you know, but I can feel that my anxiety now, when we talk, when we record is more about like, even a moment before we started recording, there was an inner voice that was saying, all right, let's, let's lay down the seven stories. Which one mm -hmm. is the most impressive one? Which one should we tell today? And then I had to tell myself, let it go, get on the call with Ramin and we'll just flow. And whatever story we'll tell, we'll tell. And if it's the least impressive or fun, because I, a part of me didn't really want to talk about the Endurer because I was like, as a recording again about parts and the day, this is not going to be, I have nicer stories to record right. that, that yeah. will, would be a, a nicer thing to yeah. listen to, I believe yeah. for somebody else. Yeah. 